Good morning, everybody. Um, and thanks, Robert. Welcome to the 10th talk in our Artists Beyond the Studio series, which is a Graphic Studio Dublin project during lockdown, where each week we talk to a different artist. I'm very happy today to introduce you all to Vida. Vida Varnagian is a multidisciplinary artist originally from Klaipeda in Lithuania, and she's currently based in Dublin. She studied landscape design, architecture and town planning in Lithuania, where she spent over 10 years working there as a landscape designer. In 2007, she came to Ireland, where she studied fine art at DIT, and she was awarded the Graphic Studio Dublin Graduate Award in 2015. She has been an active member of the studio since. In 2016, she was awarded the Mason, Hayes and Curran Commission at the studio to make a series of three prints for their international clients. Vida participates in print exhibitions, biennials, triennials and symposiums all over the world. In 2019, she was selected to take part in the Milab Makuhanga programme in Japan, where she spent time learning the craft of traditional woodblock printing. Known in the studio for her dark, rich and mysterious etchings, Vida is always keen to experiment and explore new media. As well as copper plate etching, she has worked with dry point, woodblock, steel etching, carborundum and monoprint, and she is never afraid to embark on challenging large scale prints. Alongside her print practice, and perhaps lesser spotted in the studio, Vida works on paintings, mixed media drawings, sculpture, photography and installation. Her work is an exploration of the contemporary world, and her past life as a landscape designer and architect is evident in the work. Buildings and the built environment play a central role in many of her pieces. She creates a world within her prints, paintings and drawings, which is both strange and familiar. There is a feeling that we could be stepping into a dream or a fairy tale. Wherever we are going, it looks like it's going to be an adventure. These printed worlds are situated somewhere between the conscious and the unconscious. Buildings and towers loom large. There are checkered squares everywhere. Yellow parking lines seem to have taken on a life of their own. And clouds of various shapes and colours loom in the skies. There seems to be some strange magic in the air. Walking in Ireland and holidays walking abroad have been a source of inspiration for Vida in the years since I have known her. I'm sure the past year has been difficult in this regard, and I wonder what has Vida been working on and where has she found her inspiration within her five kilometres. I am fascinated by Vida's work and would love to hear a bit more about how she conceives these deeply layered images, who are her influences and what inspires her. Vida's representations of buildings and cities are suggestive of an inner world. These spaces, while containing elements of the real, can only really exist in our minds. I look forward to escaping with Vida into this world today and learning more about her practice. So welcome, Vida. Okay. So, hello everybody. And thank you, Neve, so much for this great introduction and this opportunity as I spent a bit of time looking through my artworks and archives, which was really great. Today, I'm going to share my story in the real world and imagine about my influences and inspirations, about many things that led me to become a visual artist. The best way to explain why do I do what I do is to introduce my background, where I'm from. This question was asked probably a million times, and it's a broad question that requires a more extension explana explanation. Finally, I got you all in one place, and here is my story. My current home is in Dublin, Kilmainham. I came to Ireland in 2007, and it's been 13 years since I settled here. My intention is to stay here as much as possible, but, but it depends on the changing circumstances of the world. Obviously, there is no need to talk about Ireland, as you know this country much better than me. I rather introduce you Lithuania a country which is located in the Northern Europe. Lithuanians are in the European people belonging to the Baltic group. Latvians, Lithuanians and Estonians are the only nations that managed to create state entities in the pre-modern times. Lithuanian country didn't take form until 11th century under Mindaugas king rule. And now Lithuania's name has been known in the world for over a thousand years. Every country has its own story, so 
the story is of Lithuania. My hometown, where I was born and raised, is located on beautiful Baltic Sea coast. It is the third city in Lithuania, something like Cork, just a slightly little bit smaller. Klaipeda or Memel, is, which is German name, has its own story. The town was established in the 12th century by the Teutonic Knights, and it was controlled by Germans, Swedes, Russians over the different periods of time until the 20th century. Memel was important as a political and economic center of the disputed border region. After Germany's loss on the, of the World War I, Memel City was detached from Germany and acclaimed as a part of Lithuania Republic. The history of old Klaipeda ended in 1945, when the city was overrun by Soviet army. The invading soldiers found only 20 inhabitants left in the city because all Germans were evacuated from the town and moved to Germany. After this, Klaipeda was repopulated by Lithuanians and Russians. The total change of population, devastated old town and people living in Klaipeda have just a little connection with the place as the most of people moved in from somewhere else. You can see Lenin <laughs> sculpture in the middle. The old photographs and some notable buildings that have survived in the old town are the only evidences of the glory and beauty that was left of Klaipeda. For this reason, in my dreams, I sculpted an image of my own city in which I would like to live. And this is, was my first imagined heterotopia that I will explain later. A picture is worth a thousand words and nothing better tells the story than pictures. This is why I want to show you photographs of Romaldas Pozierskis, especially those that were made in 80s and 90s. These photographs represent everyday life and emotions of that period. Pozierskis is one of the best known Lithuanian photographers. His series of photographs were published and exhibited broadly in Lithuania and abroad. The art critics and historians say that Pozierski's black and white works have influenced the Baltic schools for generations, especially documentary style photographs that captured peop Lithuanian people's lives during the time of communist rule. His work is called documentary prose, which tells a great story about ordinary people with the most important focus on emotion and doesn't seek to hide the run-down homes and streets of everyday life. Romualdas Pozierski's work is most significant as a personal contribution to Lithuania's heritage by documenting how it happened during such a period of social and political upheaval. Another great photographer, Antana Sutkus. People of Lithuania is considered one of the most important work in documenting the changing life and people in Lithuania. The reason he makes photographs is not to reflect the objective reality. He wants to capture people the way they are. He uses a camera as a tool to scan the world surrounding us. Children in his work uh, is a favorite motif because childhood is the most important platform for me as a photographer. Children, children live in different worlds. Sometimes I succeed in showing that world, says Sutkus. Remingus Trigis, another prominent contemporary photography in Lithuania. Trigis work is never about people. He, he still lives empty landscapes and architecture. architecture would be called nature morte. He is manipulating analog photography methods using different chemicals and mechanical developments to achieve this lifeless still. These methods are very unique and so much of dated as everyone nowadays uses digital technologies. Trigi's photographs are the custody of time and memory and they are mixtures from the past, current and future. 
Regis introduces a place from nowhere and everywhere. And these places are so much from my childhood. Okay, finalizing my introduction, where I'm from, I have to say that today's Klaipeda is very modern city after so much rebuilding and repopulating. Considering the fact that almost of all buildings were destroyed during the wars, the city still maintains the beautiful multicultural character. And this is me on the left and my family photograph in the uncle's studio inner, inner yard. Um, I have to confess that when I was little, I didn't, I didn't understand how could someone like those old, ugly, and almost ruined buildings. It took me a while to understand and experience, of course, the real value of architecture, which is a huge and significant part of our history. All I wanted then, it was escaped and traveled somewhere far, far away into beautiful and colorful world, like in Churlani's painting. Nikolaos Konstantinos Churlanis was a Lithuanian painter, composer, and writer in pre-war Lithuania. He, he has been considered one of the pioneers of abstract art in Europe. Churlanis greatly contributed to symbolism and art nouveau. His work has had a profound influence on modern Lithuanian culture. Churlanis' paintings captivate mysterious content and picturesque image. He was thinking very independently from the leading artists of that time. And in, context, in context of the 19th century art, Churlanis' paintings were considerably innovative. Churlanis was interested in history, philosophy, and astronomy as well. He was also interested in theories which analyzed imaginary visions and perceptions and discussions how to activate the creative power of imagination. A mystical pantheist, he was an above all visionary thinker. He influenced many Russian artists of this time, in particular Malevich and Kandinsky, despite that later they attempted to deny the connection. Although Churlanis reached a certain notoriety during his lifetime, he often experienced financial hardship. For this reason, he used a poor quality tempera and water, watercolor, what resulted that most of, his, of the work are extremely fragile and only can be seen in Lithuanian museums. But here I am, back to reality of the world of everyday occupation. Um, I don't want to talk much about my jobs as this is different topic and experience, but I want to mention that design and urban planning skills significantly influence my visual and art practice in general. Very briefly, I'm going to mention that I used to work with small and large landscaping projects, planning parks, squares for city, also working on projects of general restoration of old town cemeteries, streetscapes, city gardens, and many other public and private objects, including hotels and restaurants. For many years, I worked hard as planner and landscape architect was exhausted me emotionally and physically. So I wanted to change my environment, profession. I wanted to change everything and I did it. It took a while, but I have no regrets. <laughs> Currently I'm working as part-time graphic designer and it's only for making extra money for living so the main focus goes to my visual art practice. These etchings prove how much my occupation influences my choice of subject matter. I would consider myself as an urban explorer as my recent work very much focused on aesthetic representation of city. I like to capture forgotten corners and places hidden from plain view or show a well-known landmark from a different angle. And this looks very much opposite to my previous work that you will see later. My recent etchings and are reflections of cities, mostly of Dublin, because it's my home now, to document the shadow, line, and shape 
this is what interests me. My visual language is influenced by what I see and most important, how I feel about cities. Okay, next chapter, influences and inspirations. My greatest influencer was my uncle Václav Vasilyukov. He was a painter, art teacher, and very intellectual personality. I have absolutely great memories about him as he taught me a lot of things. And he was the one who introduced me to the life of art and travels. He was a brave voyager. He, we traveled all around Lithuania and we had many great adventures and misadventures. My uncle was always a most inspiring figure for me in my life until he passed away 21 years ago. It was massive tragedy to me, but later I understood that I never lost him or he just become part of me. Books. Just a little list to mention. Haruki Murakami, Carlos Castaneda, Marquez, Murdoch, Bugal, Bulgakov, Akhmatova, Dostoevsky, Gogol, Yurga, Ivanovskaita. I could, I could make the, the really large list, but these are, these are the main books I like. And through the books, we can go anywhere. We can be anyone and learn anything. That's why books gives us wings to our imagination and new perspective to look at the different things and situation. That's why I like so much Haruki Murakami, Japanese writer. Murakami probably will never tell you what any of the fantastical contents in his work is supposed to mean. Love and loneliness, alternative and surreal worlds, enigmatic characters and people who seem impassive but are stirred by deep emotions. He created a nostalgic world of for everyone inspiration and reading his books is always a great adventure to me. Carlos Castaneda books. Uh, these books describe his training in shamanism, particularly the Toltec culture. These books are asserted as fiction stories, but Supporters claim that the books are either true or at least very valuable philosophical works. Very inspiring journeys of ancient Mexico shamans into different worlds through the magical passes. I'm a huge fan of movies. Wim Wenders, Emir Kosturica are my favorite filmmakers, but Tarkovsky is one of the greatest movie directors. In fact, he only made only seven movies, which are all masterpieces. Tarkovsky developed a theory of cinema that is called sculpting in time. By this, he meant that a unique characteristic of cinema as a medium was to take our experience of time and alter it. Tarkovsky films are like moving paintings or photographs, which are beautiful and mysterious depictions of world. Butoh. Butoh is a unique form of dance theater originated in Japan during the 50s. Rather than aspiring to an aesthetic ideal, the dance attempts to expose the joys and sorrow of life exploring the most fundamental elements of physical and psychological existence. Butoh is new and is being taught to Zen students and others as a way to acknowledge difficult emotions. I fell in love with this kind of art when I was attending Moving Bodies Dance Theater Festival in Dublin six years ago. Okay, uh, stage spec spectacle by Slava Poluni. No show. Since 1993, this show was performed in hundreds of cities, multiple thousand times, for millions of spectators from all nationalities, genders, beliefs, types of, and ages. It's a genre of its own and remains a sp spontaneous and magical, systematically catapulting adults back in childhood. Oh, believe me, it's really fantastic. I show you a little. Insert. 
Finally, I arrived a bit closer to my art practice. After all these different influences and being creative persona myself, I finally decided that I need education in visual arts. I was enjoying painting and drawing, but I wasn't happy for my outcomes and I didn't want how to develop it further. I wanted to upskill my education in the field of arts and I thought that it would be great integration process as well. I spent four years studying fine arts and it was a great adventure as, a, as I acquired the knowledge and skills that are needed to operate as a visual artist. Critical theory and professional practice were a major modules that helps me, that helped me with the, to develop the skills to realize my ideas and understand critical discourses of contemporary fine art. Heterotopias, they are things of other spaces. This concept was elaborated by philosopher Michel Foucault to describe certain spaces that are somehow other. Heterotopias are worlds within worlds which are neither here nor there that are simultane simultaneously physical and mental such a space of phone call. The project Everything that you see is not here anymore is based on a search of new methods to read the place. These rooms are representing an anonymous space suspended by time in which something exists or lives, but we are not able to see it because everything that you see is not here anymore. I wanted to identify a room as a heterotopia, the space where we live and dream where everything is erased and we only remember it from our dreams. After completing Photoshop class in 2014, I just loved creating storylines that contain dreamlike and imaginary elements. Unfortunately, I abandoned this area, but it's my, in my plans to create more surreal world because I really love it. Because also I really like those elements I use in Photoshop to you transfer into different medias and that's how it works for me. Where is my home or a faraway city represents an interpretation of a city which perhaps exists in the real imagined on or forgotten places which with a close in investigation, I want to convey a view of the city encoded in multi-layers between inner and outer world, spiritual and physical space. I recreated a house of a distant city, utopian reminiscence about a faraway city from my memories. I always feel sentimental and nostalgic attachment to the places where I've lived or traveled. This project was multidisciplinary and I produced a series of paintings, drawings, etchings, photographs, sculptures, and body extension performance because there was so much I wanted to say. And my efforts were noticed. And on the final year of my studies in 2015, I received Graphic Studio Dublin Award. Woo! Same year, Straight after my graduation show, I and my husband Ginteras set out a new adventure to walk Camino de Santiago del Norte way. Camino Norte is one of the oldest pilgrimage routes. It starts from Irún, Spain, and goes to Santiago de Compostela, which is the final destination. The route covers 824 kilometers, but we walked approximately 600 in only three weeks. This journey was extremely important to me because it was, I was overwhelmed with so many emotions then, uh, including my father's death and Camino del Norte was perfect decision. And I would recommend it to everyone. Um, you can watch American Spanish movie drama, The Way, to 
to get the sense of it, but it's much better when you're experiencing it yourself. During this trip, I discovered many things that influenced my perception of the world and people. I never, I never traveled this way before. So uh, this pilgrimage became much, uh, it, this pilgrimage changed my perception of the world and people. And I became much stronger, both emotionally and physically. And it was the first time I discovered the mountains. And this is how it began. From one culture to another, from Lithuania to Ireland. And all these heterotopias that followed me so, for so many years started to transform into something else. And this is, was the beginning of my visual art practice and my new adventures into the professional art world. We started traveling a lot, a lot around Europe as we never had an opportunity to travel this way before. And because we lived for so long time under different regimes and in different worlds. The series of houses are observational views of social and cultural environment. I capture architectural spaces and add to them individual character. Something little surreal, dreamlike, what comes from visited cities, read books, heard stories, watched movies, dreams, and memories. I love René Magritte, Giorgio Di Chirico, Marx and Ernst, Salvador Dali, Edward Hooper, artwork and ideas. In 2015, I was invited to participate in the group show Strong Water, organized by Etching Guild at Jurmala City Museum in Latvia. The guild asked for specific topic which had to be associated with water. And I created those three towers because I was so much attached to the idea of architectural forms and couldn't think about anything else making water. <laughs> Windsocks are my, are my favorite small etchings on the left. I made them in 2017, and now all the windsocks are chasing me around the world. You will see it later. Houses again. I made those for corporate art collection of Mason Heights and Curran in collaboration with Graphic Studio. It was an amazing experience. I, I learned so much during this project process. My little girls, just to mention, they are for all from my dream world fairy tales. Okay, here you are, Graphic Studio membership. I'm very lucky to be part of such an amazing community where everyone is linked with a great passion to make fine art prints. It's a great place with the perfect facilities and support. I participated in many exhibitions organized by Graphic Studio Gallery, Studio Workshops, and other events. Professional collaborative work environment, studio space, amazing community. And all these workshops, there is everything for a successful visual art practice. Back to adventures. Grand Tour du Mont Blanc. This route is a long distance hiking through three different countries. In this encircles the it circles the Mount Blanc Massif and covers a distance of roughly 200 kilometers. The trail moves through wide open green hillsides, old farmhouses, villages, auberge and hoods, wild rivers, and many passes through different valleys. After this trip, the mountains become my new heterotopia that I have to discover. The mountains keep me continuously wanting to know more, feel more, and travel more. French Pyrenees, another great adventure. This time 300 kilometers through the mountains over three weeks. Why do I hike? Why do I adventure? Researchers indicate that hiking adventures keep you mentally sharp. There are several physical health benefits of adventure travel. It's mental wellness and enlightenment of your soul. And the most important, adventure travel feeds your dreams and builds your confidence. 
the Claw Mountains. I'm sure there is no need to introduce those ones. We hike here every year multiple times. And every time I go, I find myself changing. This is my first attempt to paint mountains. <laughs> they are mixed media paintings on paper uh, mounted on the aluminum board. Blue silhouettes. These are also mixed paintings uh, are of Wicklow and Mayo mountains uh, sold to art collector in America. Japan. Mila Pomokuhanga Innovation Laboratory is artist in residence program with, with extensive knowledge of water-based woodblock printmaking. For me, it was another most significant adventure in my life. The residential studio was located at the roof of Mount Fuji with inspiring views. I spent around, around 30 days in residency and later I traveled around the country for another two weeks. Japan is extremely different world, almost the one I was seeking from my childhood. I hope to return to study Mokuhanga uh, in the future for an advanced level, I really hope. And here you are, Winsocks again, this time in Nagano city, Japan. such a luck that I studied basic of Mokuhanga technique because now I'm able to make some artworks at home when everything is closed. And I show you a little video. Mm -hmm. technique is still new to me and I need more time to practice and develop my skills. But I'm really happy that one of my wood blocks, you can see the red image in this collage, uh, is, was shown in the Conrecki exhibition curated by graphic studio member Kate McDonough. Thank you, Kate. Paris. Residency at the Center Cultural Irlandes. This was another great opportunity to develop my visual art practice further. During my time at the center, I explored Parisian museums, especially those with Asian artistic traditions and the manner in which impressionist and post-impressionist exper experimented with Japanese technique. I spent a month in a beautiful Paris, the city itself as a museum. I have collected more memories and heterotopias that I have to make. During the residency, I created a series of small woodblock prints that I call emotions and impressions from Paris. Also, I discovered place Place de la Concorde in Paris just to see how it has changed through the years. It was important to me because when I made Daching a postcard from Paris, for diamond exhibition. I never knew this place, place existed. I just liked a vintage postcard that was uh, captured in 1916. I intend to create vintage postcard series of the city to encourage people to revisit places from the past because the cities are changing and they, they, won't, be an, be, they won't be same anymore. What I'm currently working on? Good question. <laughs> it was tough year for everyone, and especially for artists. 
And here at home, I'm drawing and painting small pieces, experimenting and researching for new ideas. Urban geography, city structures is the new idea based on folding and unfolding paper in the same way as origami, which is the part of paper folding as often associated with Japanese culture. The goal is to transform a flat square sheet of paper into a finished sculpture through folding and manipulation techniques. Later, I photograph them and assemble into new structures, then photograph them again, and then drove them again. And this endless process, what I like, I'm really kind of curious what, with, what will come. Origami helps me think and relax. That's the another way. <laughs> I was very optimistic when lockdown started, and I thought that I will have loads of time to work on new ideas, improve my Mokuhanga techniques. But in reality, I start feeling more like I am locked in a cage, and I really miss the mountains, my old great journeys, which I planned, but I had to cancel or postpone, and I miss the studio. I miss hooks, but that's the way the world is. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you so much, Vida. <laughs> that was really fascinating. I have a question for you. Yeah. The, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a kind of a recurring motif in your work of the chessboard. And I, I, I really love it. And it's really beautiful. I could see one of your images of Klaipeda and it was, the house and then th there was the photograph and then there was your print but the house instead was covered in this checkerboard motif and I'm just wondering where does it come from and, and why why does it why does it keep coming back? Um, probably it's it's kind of deep memories from church because usually in in Klaipeda church there were a floor uh, in this checkered motif and it's what it was, it scared me a lot, but I don't know why, because I was a child. Uh, but that checkered floor from the church is following me all the time. So probably that's why. When I was looking for how to represent, how to express, how what what visual language to use, the checkered floor always was kind of coming as heterotopia of something other so probably that's why yeah fascinating so, it's it's very it's very evocative it's very theatrical you know and I, I really love it I know many artists using this because it's really really kind of strong uh, strong uh, texture or whatever the, can I ask her Vida, does she have much interaction with Lithuania now does she go back with her artworks uh, probably yes, I guess, because uh, I'm trying to run from it, but it always follows me with every my work. So because maybe because it's my roots, I don't know. So, but yes, it is, it's coming. And I kind of really like revisiting the places from the past. So, so I really was surprised when I did one etching with the old townhouse, the Cheherad house you saw on the presentation. And you saw the next photograph of the house, which is from Lithuania. And the fun is like me, if she noticed it and she said, why the look, those photographs which were taken later, like three years later, when I, since when I made that etching, she said, look, this house looks like your etching. <laughs> so, like it's very kind of natural. <laughs> so I, it, there is no kind of reasons really kind of particular for this, it's a natural process. Okay. Vida, could I ask a question there? Sure. Um, um, Vida, that was wonderful. Uh, thank you yeah. for sharing your story. It's really lovely to hear and a great way into your work in a different way. But I was just going to ask, um, why Ireland? How did you manage to choose to come and live in Ireland? Oh, yeah, 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 good question. <laughs> Another difficult one. Yeah, probably it happened naturally as well because uh, it happened like I was looking a country to go to live and 
try different life because as I said, I was so tired after my old uh, job, which was really exhausting. I'm re I really mean really exhausting. I was so tired and a and, and little bit depressed, I guess. So I really want to change the environment and it happened. I didn't know where to go actually. I didn't speak in English. I just spoke in Russian and Lithuanian languages then and a little bit in German. Uh, English language was very new for me and I, I wasn't very keen to go, but I, I knew like to go to English spoken environment somewhere. And it happened that my husband, he got a job in Dublin mm -hmm. and he moved first and we lived this way like two years in separation. I was in Lithuania, he was here, another heterotopia. <laughs> and then we came to visit him in Dublin and I was shocked and amazed by different culture, similarities and differences. And I thought, wow, that's different environments. I really want to disappear in this, mm -hmm. this kind of world. So, and after long considerations, we decided to move to Dublin. And what was really great success, as you see. Ida, I know you do quite a bit of very, um, very intricate work, working with additioning with the studio. So you're working with visiting artists and other people, printing and editioning their work. Do you find that that influences what you what you do in your own then? As yeah, well as it, just learning skills, good skills. Yeah, it does. It does. Especially the last ones uh, I did for Mary Lohan and Gwen O'Dowd with the color, with the colors, because I am kind of very, very shy with the colors. I use very monotonic, very, very monocolor, like mostly three, four colors. But working in a studio for those artists, and especially with Neve, Neve, you again. <laughs> so she she's master with color mixing. So I learn a lot and influence it. That's how you can see how much colors start kind of coming into my work. And now I'm not afraid anymore about colors. So I'm really glad that I did this job for the studio because it influenced it not to be afraid of color anymore. So like for me, it was really good exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it was really good, thankfully. Great. Um, and I guess since it's, you know, a lot of this talk has been about dreams and, and dreaming and um, other worlds, what, what plans have you got by that? for when the studio reopens. Do you have any plans for new prints or new work? What, what, what's the first thing you're gonna do? I don't know uh, when we're gonna open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully it will, it will be open. Yeah, I can't wait until it will open. Because I don't know, there are a lot of plans, but I, there are actually a lot of plans and non-plans. I, I have to start making them kind of in order. So what first I'm going to do. But I'm definitely sure what first I'm going to do, just pack my backpack and go to the mountains for, I don't know, a couple of days. It would be better weeks. <laughs> so just enjoy myself in the, with the nature, what I missed all this five kilometer rule. It's kind of killing the artist who is traveler for, from the nature. But yeah, yes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making little sketches I didn't show you in, in, in uh, not because they are not finished. I'm not like kind of very confident confident with this. So kind of I have loads of sketches. Probably I'm going to make some etchings and mokuhanga as well. Great. So, yeah. Ho hopefully before before too long. Anyway, hopefully yeah. in the next few months. <laughs> I yeah. Uh, I could I ask you? Um, I I'm really fascinated to see that you do performance as well, and I just would never have imagined that with you. <laughs> and you know because. Uh, <laughs> I suppose I, I see sometimes you seem like much kind of more reserved, you know, shyer or not as <laughs> a performer. And how do you, how do you find that? Uh, when I cover my head, it's fine. <laughs> 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 I feel more comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like performance art and I was considering this form, this kind of expressing my ideas through this form of art, but I'm not doing this because it's, Honestly, it's too much, too much everything. And I can't, 
kind of use use every media I in my artwork, so kind of expressing my ideas. But I really would love to do more performance art that covered my head. <laughs> so yeah, I have done some more like like it was that one was really fun. Where is my home? I was looking for my home with house on my head, and I have really nice series of photographs. My husband, he he's a photographer. He did a really beautiful uh, narrative story, uh, how I am far away and looking for my home here in Ireland. So uh, that was a representing message. But I, I did also different uh, performance, like expressing my emotions. And there is another interesting photograph series uh, when I was using different materials like plastic sheets, wool, uh, I everything with hidden head, obviously, <laughs> and I perform uh, emotions, which is also interesting. So, but I didn't use those in my work because, as I said, too much, too much ideas, <laughs> too many. Vida, yeah, a brief question. Um, yeah, can you can you suggest um, maybe books on contemporary art theory? You seem to be very well versed in that. Oh, there is many books, uh, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not able to give it to that list right now. I can send it, email you later on, or anybody is interested. So there is a list and I'm reading a couple of them right now. So, but unfortunately my memory is not this great. I, I have to write down as you, as you notice it. <laughs> so <laughs> to follow the, you know, kind of, I, I let you know later, is that okay? Hi, Vaida. Hello, Matthew. Good to see you. Thank you for Good to see you. a fab presentation. Oh, Is thank you. Just share that list on the Facebook group rather than then you wouldn't have to worry. Yeah, about yeah that's that's a perfect group. idea. If anybody is interested about reference about mentioned in my presentation, I would really glad to share it on, 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 on Facebook group. So, yeah, um, why not? And Hedgehog in the Fog, I have to ask, is this something you watched as a child and it stuck with you or is it something you came across later in life? It's just I was introduced to it about six months ago and I've watched it uh, numerous times already. I love the, the, the animation. Uh, Hedgehog, Hedgehog in the Fog. Yeah. Okay, it's old animation and this is only the one uh, what represents what animations we had in Lithuania. I mean, Lithuania then was Soviet Union, part of Soviet Union. So, and all these kind of <laughs> animations was so scary. And for when, when you were a child, so like an all the mist, getting lost in the mist. And can you imagine it's like, Okay, what's good? And so when you grow with this kind of, you kind of immediately are kind of perception of the world is you're different, you know, kind of what kind of the world is awaiting you outside the home, like all this mists and everything. So I'm sorry, probably not everybody knows what I'm talking about, but this is a animation film uh, about Hedgehog in the fog. Uh, he was going to visit his friend and he enjoyed the fog. So, and he got lost in the fog and met uh, uh, a horse. He met different creatures and then imagination came like all the, the scary things. And yeah, it influenced me really, really much. <laughs> Thanks, Biden. By the way, I ask just one other question. Um, the, the photographer that you referenced, who was very interested in the other worlds of children's minds. Yeah, Antado uh, Sutkus, yes. Yeah, many of your uh, images are, are very um, uh, mis magical, if you like. I, I imagine that children would, would, they would appeal to children very much. Have you ever considered, or have you done any book illustrations uh, in particular for children? Or, followed a narrative line with your with your work uh, no i didn't but i really would love to i was thinking about this a lot earlier when i was in my let's say 30s or 20s i really kind of liked the idea to illustrate books or something but never had an opportunity uh, but 
yeah it's really great idea <laughs> so <laughs> no, just that image at the very beginning of the balloon uh, yeah. it, it seemed to me to be a fantastic uh, um, summation almost of the escape into some other dimension almost you know so I imagine children would very much be attracted to that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kieran. Yeah, I think it would be kind of really good idea. Uh, I consider it definitely in my future when I have a time because there are so many ideas and everything so much. I have no time to fulfill all the the lists <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> but thank you for 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 guiding me for this because it's really important and and that balloon exactly you read the message really right so it's that exactly what i meant <laughs> very good okay, well, yeah. <laughs> thank you a beautiful image yeah. uh, thank you okay anyone else anyone got one last question yeah, I just going to say thank you, yeah. that was absolutely wonderful. I really enjoyed listening to your whole story. I was wondering about, I was looking to see what language you read in, because I saw you had uh, Garcia Marquez in English and, uh, was it in Lithuanian? No, in English. <laughs> but you had two books, you showed two Garcia Marquez. Oh yeah, yeah, I read in both. Yeah. I read in both and it's really interesting because I have this opportunity to compare them, uh, yes, uh, yes. the translation and I really kind of enjoying it. It variates, honestly. The meanings are transferred in different ways. Let's yes, see that's... how an English say and a Lithuanian say. And I really would love to read it in, 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 in let's say, <laughs> Russian or whatever. Just... Yeah, but yeah. I really like that story. It's very, very nostalgic, very melancholic and, and sad. <laughs> um, yeah, and also magical. And magical as well. I like the strength of the characters. Yeah. Like, and like, it teached me like, whatever happened in your life, so just keep going. Like, just find the solutions or something like this. So, so really love those. Yeah, so, and I couldn't say which one the version I liked, the English or Lithuanian, both of them in some different ways. So, yeah. I wonder if you thought, you know, when you're thinking about uh, that, you know, I find that if you if you're thinking two languages, that sometimes there's some things you think about, and some are more emotional. Do you find yeah, that if, emotion maybe comes from that act, in actual fact, working from one language to another, extra things happen in your mind? Yeah, and and the meanings are kind of expanding <clears throat> a lot a bit because how you understand all these things and vocabulary as well. <laughs> so. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting experience. Yeah. So, Th thank you. I have another question, Vida. Um, yes, sure. That, thinking about it, was it through the work of Murakami that your interest in Japan developed, or what was it that attracted you to study Mokuhanga? <laughs> uh, Mokuhanga, actually, I have to confess, it was since my twenties. I really loved Japanese woodblock prints. Mm. Uh, they were allowed, like like in Soviet Union, loads of different things like music and art was forbidden. So we weren't allowed to see, let's say, Mona Lisa because it, it was forbidden in that time to see those kind of masterpieces. And we didn't know even they existed. So, but Japanese woodblocks, they were uh, kind of circulating in all the published books, uh, journals, or whatever. And I was very familiar with this technique. So, and I really loved it then. But then I forgot it because other things came into my life, like family, loads of things. And exactly, Haruki Murakami reminded me. Mm. She reminded me that about woodblocks that I loved before. So, so they, it's really interesting. So everything is related. So you see, uh, life is, uh, yeah, life is, yeah, life is like circle. Everything goes around like this. So yeah, so yeah, definitely, it kind of somehow influenced me on this, and especially with Japan, that feeling, that different feeling of the Japanese and everything. So I really love it. Yeah. Marta, thank, thank you very much for a really fantastic talk. I think everyone was very pleased, and um, it was really nice to see so many of your lovely images.